Hi there, welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Regina and in today's video I am going to get to work cleaning out my determinate tomato bed to get it ready for my fall tomato plant. So my determinate tomato bed is a wild, wild mess. But my tomatoes have pretty much given what they're going to give. Remember determinate tomatoes give all of their tomatoes over a few weeks and then they're pretty much done. So they've given all they're going to give this season and because we have such a long growing season, I want to get another round of tomatoes in so that I can, well, have more tomatoes to freeze and to make paste out of, maybe make some sauce, etc. So I am going to get this thing all cleaned out and then in a couple of days I'm going to plant in my tomatoes. But I'm going to bring you along for the process of me getting all of these pulled out in this video and then in the next one I'll show you um, I'll show you guys how I get those planted. Now the reason I'm doing it a little bit differently rather than doing everything in one video is because I have been prepping to get this done and I didn't I had completely forgotten about the fact that I need to harden off my tomato plants and with it being consistently over a hundred degrees I know that those plants are not going to be okay if I just plant them out here without them having gotten used to the sun. So I want to give them at least three or four days of being hardened, hardened off out here, spending a few hours a day out in the sun before I plant them out here. So because of that, I'll just show you guys my process of getting this all cleaned out and the before and after. And then in the next video, I'll show you how I get those planted. Sound good? All right. Well, before we get into it, go ahead and click that like button on this video. And of course, if you're interested in more gardening content, I garden in zone 8A in North Texas, then go ahead and do that. And of course, if you know gardeners who you think would find this content helpful, then share this video. Yeah, that would be helpful. <laughs> but again, let's get into it. So one thing that keeps gardeners from kind of pulling up the plants and starting fresh is because even determinate tomatoes, like mine, they're still starting to kind of set a few more blooms. Not a lot, but a few more. And it's hard to, to pull out tomatoes that are blooming, if, if anybody is like me, right? And, but I just recommend you suck it up and do it. <laughs> the reason why I could say that is because last year I had a determinate tomato bed like this one. And... I just left the plants because, you know, I got my tomatoes and then I kind of let my plants go. And they did eventually start to set more fruit, but they set it like, they didn't set nearly as much as they did kind of their first round. And they set it in such a way that it just, um, I had a bunch of green tomatoes by the time we got to a freeze and I had to pull up the plants. And so it wasn't really worth it. Now I used some of those green tomatoes, I pickled some of them and I used them the best I could but they're just not quite as useful as ripe tomatoes. So it wasn't really worth it. I did not get what I would have gotten had I started fresh with new plants. So I'm gonna suck it up. Any on here that I find that are ripe, I am going to save, of course, but I'm gonna pull most of these out. Now, another thing to keep in mind, I do have these Amish paste tomatoes. Y'all, these were a bust. So I don't know if they just hate me, but if you're growing in a climate like mine, I don't think I recommend them um, because the Roma is literally growing in the same bed right next to them, grew plenty of tomatoes and the early dolls as well. But these Amish paste, I didn't get a single tomato, like legit zero. So I know people will comment on my videos and let me know that their tomatoes aren't doing well and they haven't gotten any tomatoes. And I think it, it probably has something to do with variety. Some varieties just are not going to perform in certain climates. And these Amish paste are definitely a, an example of that because they just, I mean, I start, I got some blooms and there are blooms on here even now, but the blooms would just dry up and die and fall off. And they got the same fertilizer, the same exact sunlight, everything exactly the same as these Romas and early doll tomatoes. So just a heads up on that. So it's probably not you. It's probably just the variety of the tomato and it just not liking it where they're growing. So right now it is 8.36 in the morning and the temperature rises quickly. So I'm gonna do this as fast as I can. I have my pruners, I have my gloves. I probably should've worn sleeves. Sometimes this irritates my skin, but that's fine. I'll just hop in the shower right after. And I'm just gonna pull all of this stuff out. 
and kind of be indiscriminate about it. <laughs> All right, let's go. Perfect. Perfect. Okay, so now that the tomato bed is all cleaned out, I'll be bagging up all of the debris a little later. It's garbage day, so I was gonna try to do it today, but I heard the garbage truck go by, so I missed it. Um, so I'll be bagging that up later, or I'll ask my husband to do it, and maybe he can bag it up for me. We'll see, <laughs> we'll see how it goes. It'll probably just end up being me doing it. Um, but next thing I wanna do, since I have my camera out, and it's not quite a million degrees yet, it's still early, it's only, 901 um i'm gonna go ahead and do some harvesting i have some okra that needs harvesting and some tomatoes from my crazy wild jungle determinate tomato bed so i figure got the camera out have my pruners um, i just went and grabbed my basket so we're gonna go ahead and get that done too so behind me is my okra bed the plants have gotten even taller than the last time that you saw them um, and they're growing really, really well. Now, I've had one challenge, and that was when I was out of town on vacation for the few days that my husband was home and not with us on the vacation, I asked him to harvest okra, and that was actually near the end of the trip. He got home before we did. And he, you know how okra grows, you'll have multiple pieces of okra kind of growing from the tip? Well, when he harvested those, he literally just cut off the tip of the plant because that was to him more efficient, which I mean, it looks more efficient except for the growing tip is in there. So I have like three or four plants that he cut off like that. So I'm a little sad about it, um, but he didn't know, he doesn't garden. Um, so hopefully those will develop some side shoots because they do grow okra from the sides as well. So I'm leaving those in, but otherwise the okra has been producing really well. It's probably time for me to hit it with another round of fertilizer because we have to water it so often so that causes the nutrients to be depleted even more frequently um, 
but it's still growing really, really well. Oh, you can probably see this. So I've been trying to figure out what to do with my tomatoes because they are growing wild, but they're still growing tomatoes and they're still producing. What I kind of want to do is cut back the plants and maybe they can grow suckers and that way they won't be just completely, ha completely outgrown their stakes. But I haven't decided yet. And right now I just have quite a few that I need to harvest. So I'm gonna do that now. These are sun peach, and they have been very productive. So here is what I harvested. Not bad. Okay, so these are medium cucumbers. I have been struggling with figuring out what to do with them. Like I mentioned in other videos, well, there's so many bumblebees out. Like they're big and they make noise. And I love them, but they kind of freak me out. Um, <laughs> these are medium cucumbers. I do not know what to do with them. They grow so big so quickly. They end up getting to be this size. And I don't know what to do with a bunch of excess cucumbers. So what I'm going to do is bring out my juicer. I have a juicer. I've had it for, God, 10 years, probably longer. And I used to juice things all the time. And then I realized that juicing things was going to break me because it was before I had a garden. And I used to juice things so much. And, um, and so I just kind of stopped. 
And of course, I like smoothies better because you get all the fiber from the food as well. But I can only eat so many smoothies. And so I am gonna wash this thing and I'm gonna put it in my juicer. And I have some apples in the fridge. I'm gonna juice it with some apples. I bet that's gonna be really delicious. So I'll show you guys what I end up with, um, either in this video or in my community tab, depending on when I do it. But I'm gonna try that. And so maybe I'll find a way to, de to deal with, <laughs> to use these Armenian cucumbers. So I'm gonna give that a try today. Perfect. Okay, y'all, I'm gonna try this. Just the cucumber juice, see if I like it. Okay, I mean, it tastes like cucumber. <laughs> Which, I mean, isn't terrible. I could drink it probably with ice, but I juiced some apples with it. And y'all, this juicer, I haven't used in a very, very, very long time. So I'm kind of excited it pulled out. But now I'm remembering how much I hate cleaning it, but that's okay. So this is apple juice and I also juiced some ginger. So I'm gonna mix that in. Thanks. Now this, this is tasty. Okay, I'm here for this. Okay, be juicing some Armenian cucumbers, and I'll just drink it and assume that it's giving my body nutrition. some ice so it'd be better cold so thank you for sticking around to the end of this video i hope you found the content helpful and that you liked it and if so please go ahead and click that like button that is a free way you can help out the channel that really boosts this video and youtube's algorithm and helps it get out to more gardeners so i would greatly appreciate it and of course if you're interested in more gardening content from me i am growing in north texas just outside of dallas zone 8a but of course i think that's, you know, just seeing the garden can be helpful to you, even if you don't live in that zone. Um, also, if you know other gardeners and you think they find this content helpful, then of course share this video with them. That also helps out the channel, helps the channel to grow. Until we meet again, have a great one.